All right, so picking up where we left off. Uh, so if you're just getting here, I'm making a series of videos for mostly for edge physics educators so that they can use Python in their physics courses. And I'm trying to use my hands. Um, and so I've been working on starting from scratch. What is Python? Uh, how do you do numerical calculations? How do you make three dimensional stuff? All that stuff's in the playlist and the playlist is down below. In the last exercise, we did elastic collisions between two balls, like that. Uh, and so I modeled those collisions by saying, if the two balls overlap, then there's a spring force pushing them apart. And I showed that momentum was conserved and kinetic energy was conserved for the most part. Uh, and that's what we expect for an elastic collision. Now, what about an inelastic collision? What's different about an inelastic collision? So in an inelastic collision, the two objects stick together. So how do I make that happen? Aha. I'm going to show you. Okay, so I've copied over uh, the program that I had before, and let's just run it because we're going to modify this. And so if you if you want to know how to make all this stuff, go look at the last video. So this has uh, two objects colliding together. I'm going to actually uh, change this. I'm going to give the initial, the ball B a zero momentum to start out with. I just It's just easier. And on top of that, I'm not going to have a glancing collision. I'm going to have them... Uh, collide head on and then we can change that. So I'm just going to move this position down to negative zero. Yeah. Oh, what the heck happened? Ne oh, I put it on top of each other. I'm sorry. Negative point. Uh, I moved the, that was bad. Point four. That zero. And there we go. And so that's a, a elastic collision. Nothing new there. I just change it. Um, and I've already renamed it says inelastic collisions and I will put the code down below so that you can play with it. But again, you know, typing this up is probably useful. I would recommend that you don't just copy it and run it. Uh, typing it, you make little mistakes, you learn to find your own errors. And if you're using this with students, that's super helpful because they're going to make a mistake. And, and practicing finding those mistakes is very, very useful for the students. So I'd practice some making some mistakes. Okay, so um, how do we make this an any, how do we make them stick together? Well, it, in my model down here, I, I look and I say, okay, I calculate the vector between the two balls. And then I should have two balls. Do I have two balls? Let's see. No, oh well. Uh, and if that vector is, the magnitude of that vector is less than the sum of the radiuses, then they overlap. And then I calculate the force to push them apart. And if at the beginning of the loop, I set this, uh, I set the vector forces between them equal to each other, uh, e equal to zero, so, so that it has to recalculate them every time. So what I want to do is, first of all, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is this, because there's already a spring force pulling them back, right? If I, what I want to be able to do is to have that spring continue acting and pull them back together, and so they keep, they keep these stuck together. So right now, it just pushes them apart, and once they're apart, there's no, once they're apart, there's nothing pulling back because they're, they're past each other's radius. So let's do this. There's one way to do this. I'm going to make a Boolean variable, and I've never talked about Boolean variables in this thing before. Oh, no, we have. No, have we? Yeah, we have. You've seen them up here. Uh, make trail equals true. That's a Boolean. Okay. So I'm going to say contact equals false. So when you do Boolean variables, true or false, it has to be capitalized. Uh, and so it's capital false. And so that's just a variable. It could be false, it could be true. Okay, right now it's false. And so what I'm gonna do down here is say, if the two things overlap, then they're gonna make contact and I want them to always have a spring force pulling them apart. So I'm gonna say, if the radius is less than that or contact. So these are two uh, true or false things, right? Mag of R is less than that. That's either true or false. And then so this says, if either one of them is true, then do the following. And so the first thing I'm going to do in there is to say, okay, contact equals true. And so if they overlap, contact's going to be true. And now every time I go back through that loop, it's going to do that. They're going to be stuck together. They're going to keep on having that spring force. So even if they pull apart, now even though their uh, separation is greater than the sum of the radiuses, it's going to pull them back together. So will that work? Let's see. 
Okay, so I like that, right? One, did they stick together? Well, they kind of did. Two, do they oscillate? Yeah, they oscillate, and that's okay, right? Because if you think about it, okay, let's do this first. Is momentum conserved? Momentum should be conserved as long as the, uh, the force between them is equal and opposite for the same amount of time. That should be the case here, right? That's the only force acting on this. So let's plot um, the force as a function of time. Uh, I, I should just, let's just call this P, PX. And I'm going to put the units because I don't want to. And so I'll plot in the kinetic energy and we'll go back to that in a little bit. Right now I'm going to plot uh, ball A dot P dot X, ball B, oh, that is capital, B dot P dot X, that should be capital A. And then the sum of those is just going to be ball A dot P dot X plus ball B dot P dot X. And did I even, could you even see that thing? Well, let's see. Could you see them collide or is my face in the way? No, you can. And notice how they're, they're shaking. I kind of like that. Okay. So then if we look at the momentum, oh, let me, I'm going to, this bother me. Okay. Up here, I'm going to put um, X, let's see, width, width equals uh, 450, height equals 250. Else from it. That makes a little bit smaller graph. Okay. So is momentum conserved? Right there, you can see the total momentum is indeed constant. That's that black line's constant the whole time. Uh, and the blue is right up here because that's the first one that's moving. Uh, then it slows down, the red one speeds up, and then they oscillate. You look at that, isn't that cool? Uh, they oscillate and they, they move forward. But momentum is still conserved, right? The, the, the yellow ball speeds up and slows down. It never stops. But whenever it slows down, the, the other one speeds up. So momentum is conserved. That's pretty cool. Uh, what about kinetic energy? Um, actually, I'm trying to think. I was thinking about plotting the center of mass. Uh, actually, I'll leave that as a homework for you. I, I showed the center of mass calculation in a previous video. You could plot the, the momentum of the center of mass for this situation. That'd be pretty fun. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I, I'd like to point out, it's not a perfect elastic collision, but it's actually pretty awesome. Um, it's not perfect because they're not, they're stuck together, but they're still moving. But because they're moving, uh, we can look at energy and total energy. So let's look at the kinetic energy and see if kinetic energy is conserved. It should not be conserved in an inelastic collision. So down here, I'm just going to, I've already calculated Ka. So I'm going to say Ka. KB, and then the sum, KA plus KB, uh, and then I guess I should change my title up here because I don't want to get in trouble. So let's just call this K, and now let's run it. The animation should be the same, nothing new there. And what about the kinetic energy? Okay, so this is the total kinetic energy. Uh, you'll notice that it it's kind of constant. Um, it, it oscillates up and down, um, but it should be lower. I, I want to show that kinetic energy drop. I think I do need to find the center of mass and plot the kinetic energy of the center mass. That's what I'm going to do. So let's make a new object. Um, let's just let's not even display it. Let's just calculate it. So up here, I'm going to say. COM, that's the center mass, it's going to be equal to uh, ball A dot POS times ball A dot M plus ball B dot POS times ball B dot M. All of that divided by ball A dot M plus ball B dot M. That's the center mass. Okay, now I'm going to copy this because that's just calculating it once. I actually need to do that. Actually, I didn't even. This is cut it. I only need to do it once, but I can do it in here. Every time I get to the beginning of the loop, I'm going to calculate the center mass. Now, the momentum of the center mass. Uh, let's calculate that. Let's do it right here. I'll call that. I need the velocity. I need the velo. The momentum of the center mass is just going to be. I can just calculate it from the momentums of the thing, right? If if I have momentum. Yeah, the momentum of the center of mass is just going to be the sum of the momentums divided by, it's just going to be the sum of the momentums. 
Yeah. So just give me the sum of the momentums. So let's say com P equals ball A dot P plus ball B dot P. Yeah. Okay, so now I can go down here and calculate the kinetic energy of the center of mass. Um, let's say K com is going to be mag uh, com P squared, P squared over 2M divided by 2 times ball A dot M plus ball B dot M. That's the total, that's the kinetic energy of the center of mass. Yeah. And so before, uh, the first ball is not moving, right? So it's not going to have any kinetic energy. So the momentum is just going to be the momentum of the yellow ball. So that should work. Now down here, instead of applying the total kinetic energy, I'm going to plot the kinetic energy of the center mass, Kcom. And let's see what happens. It stayed constant. Hmm. the center of mass. So I think I'm going to come back to this one. Okay, I'm going to assign that as a homework. When you make a mistake in class, assign that as a homework. So, I mean, there's a couple ways I'm thinking of plotting that. I'm obviously not plotting that correctly. Um, because I need to, I can find the center of mass position. Taking the derivative, I'd have to do a couple tricks to get the velocity. Um, but I think, I thought that would work. The velocity of the center of mass is the momentum divided by the total mass. And then I multiply by the total mass. Okay, let's, mm, let's try it one more time. Com V is this, divided by ball A dot M plus ball B dot M. That's, I'm pretty sure that's true. That's the, that's the velocity of the center mass. Now down here, it's gonna be uh, V squared one half mv squared I can use. So let's use uh, 0.5 times ball a dot m plus ball b dot m times mag com v squared. If that doesn't work, then it's definitely going to be a homework assignment. No, that didn't work. Okay. Homework. Okay, so now, but let's just do this other thing. Uh, and I am going to answer that. I just don't want to answer right now because I, I need to think about it. Okay, let's go back up here in ball B. Uh, let's give it, uh, an, an, let's make it a glancing collision and see what happens. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm going to run this for a longer time. Because I want to show you something really important. Are they stuck together? Yes. Um, what happened to the energy? What happened to the total energy in both of those cases? In both those cases, the total energy is constant because, which I'm gonna plot right now, it's the uh, kinetic energy of A, kinetic energy B, plus the spring potential energy. And, and that's still true here, but you could also think of this as the rotational energy. So this method for modeling an inelastic collision uh, kind of shows how kinetic energy is really conserved. Also right here, zoom in on this. And you can see that they are oscillating. Um, you can kind of fix that. You can make it more or less by changing the spring constant. Let's change this to 800. Let's just see what happens. And, and is kinetic energy conserved? No. Is momentum conserved? Yes. Um, so let's plot, let's plot the total energy. Uh, let's say E, T, E, let's just call it E. It's going to be ball A kinetic energy. So that's going to be uh, mag ball a dot p squared divided, oops, divided by two times uh, ball a dot m plus, oh, I already did that, this ka. It's going to be ka plus kb plus the spring potential energy, which is one half ks squared. Okay, so up here it's going to be 0.5 times k times, now what's s squared? It's this stuff. It's this stuff right here. It's the apps. It's that squared. So I'm just going to copy that. I guess I didn't need to do that. Let's square it. And then down here, plot the total energy. And let's see if that works. No. 
Well, one, what's this? Oh, uh, that is only true one before they hit. Um, okay, so before they hit, I was calculating the kinetic energy store in the spring, even though I wasn't using it. So that's wrong. Um, so I need to do something up here in the loop to really make it work. But I think the key thing is after that, it does look like the kinetic energy, the total energy is conserved, even though it's really small and hard to see. Um, hmm. I could just say this. If contact, then that's the energy. Else, E equals KA plus KB. Ha! What do you think about that? There you go. Okay, so the total energy does oscillate a little bit, and I think that's just a rounding error, but I'm pretty happy with the way that shows that. Um, okay, so that's elastic collision, that's inelastic collisions. You know what comes next. Collisions that are neither elastic nor inelastic, uh, and I'm gonna make that in the next video. So code down below, playlist down below, uh, go back and look at the old things. You know, if you have questions, post the questions on there, because you know, I'm here for you, and I'll answer your questions, hopefully if I can. But most number one thing is start playing with Python. You're not going to get this by looking at it. So go ahead and play with Python and I'll talk to you later.